Hello, I'm Ryan from Ooznes, and today we'll do another tutorial on the work that you see in C machine. Sometimes you want to cut things which are bigger than your working area on your machine. So in this video, we will go through the process on how to do that. So the working area on the machine we've got here is 550 by 520 mil. So we have a 520 mil Y axis, and that's the maximum we can cut. The sheet material I've got here is an 18 mil piece of MDF. And this is 300 wide by 800 long. So normally we would not be able to cut the full length of this piece of material. So what we'll do with this piece of material is slide it into these clamps I've set up here. Like so. Now, what I've set up is in two clamps on the left hand side and two clamps at the back. And these clamps are perfectly right angles to each other. So this back left hand corner is going to be our work zero. And then we're going to cut this first section here. After that has finished cutting, we're going to take the material out, rotate it around 180 degrees, and then slot it back in like so. And now we can cut this set second section. Because we've got these clamps set up perfectly in 90 degrees, that corner is still exactly our work zero, even though we're flipping the material around. And then what we're going to set up in our CAM program is two layers. One layer orientated for the first cut normally, and a second layer, the same design, but rotated 108 degrees, so that would be set up for the second cut. Let's move on to the CAM program and show you how to set this up. So here we are in the spider. What we're going to do here can be done in any other CAM program like Cut2D, V-Carb or Fusion 360. I've got a material set up 300 times 800 mil. I've imported the Work B logo. I've got this Work B logo centered on our working area. I've got three layers. The first one is called the first cut, and this is with the logo orientated ready for the first cut. If I unview this and then view the second layer, as you see, I've got the Work B logo again, but this time rotated 180 degrees, and this is for the second cut. Again, this is central, central on the working area. So I know both logos on the first and second layers are exactly in the same position centrally. I've also got a third layer called working area. So this is handy as it allows us to see which vectors fall inside our working area. And this is just a rectangle the same size as our working area. If I go to the tool paths, I've got two set up. The first one is the first cut. If I double click this, and you can see I've selected up to the R as this is the last letter which falls inside our working area. If I then close this, view the second layer, and select our second layer to cut. Now in here, I select the K, B, and double E to be cut in this second cut tool part. If I close this, when you save this file, you wanna make sure you save it as two separate files, one first cut and one second cut. Because when we send it to the machine, we will send these as two separate files. Let's get back to the machine and get this job going. So now the cam side of things done, let's get on with some cutting. So first thing we're going to do is clamp this piece of material down. I've got it locked in on all three sides here. Just going to add one G clamp to this corner just to hold it in place. So the final thing we need to do is set our work zero at its back left hand corner. To do that, we're going to use our XYZ touch probe. Just check our zero. So now we have the material clamped down, the work zero set, let's begin the cut. So now the first cut is complete, what we're going to do is do the second one. So before we start this, we've got to unclamp our material, and then take this out and rotate it at 180 degrees. Like so. Reclamp it. This time, there's no need to re-zero. 
as the zero exactly the same position as the first cut, as all we've done is rotate the workpiece 180 degrees. It's locked in the same position by our clamps down the left hand side and the back side. So what I want to do is start the second cut and we'll see how it comes out. And then our second cut is complete. I'm just going to take this off so you can get a better look. So you can see that we've now cut something that's bigger than our machine size. So if you've got one of the smaller machines, I hope you found this video informative so you can get an idea of how you can cut stuff which is bigger than your machine size. We've got another one coming soon. I'm doing a different technique to cut things bigger than your work size and this involves using the tiling function in your CAM software. So please subscribe to our channel and like our video.